Today, I welcome Anastasia Sivkova, a denturist who works at the large combined prosthodontic perio practice in Toronto, Prosthodontic Associates. And she wants to tell us today about a technology that has been recently incorporated at Prosthodontic Associates. Anastasia, what is this technology that you want to tell us about? Hello, John. Thank you for having me here today. So the technology I want to talk to you about is Eclipse. It is a denture-based resin that is made of composite. Instead of the usual, uh, a predominantly used metal methacrylate, which is acrylic, uh, it is composed of um, um, UDMA, which is uracil demethacrylate. It is a similar material to what we have uh, in a dental practice in fillings, it's a white filling material, but it has been formulated uh, to be used as a denture-based material. So, so why have you incorporated Eclipse into your everyday practice? Well, normally in every practice, and we did uh, for the longest time use acrylic as well, um, acrylic is practically the only thing being used today for uh, denture fabrication. But we thought... Uh, there are other things available on the market for people, for dentures. Uh, having not given a choice to the patient to choose the material they wish their denture made of, uh, it's slightly impractical. And we decided that uh, it is slightly our responsibility to provide the choices for the patient. And would some patients have an allergy or would they have a particular preference not to have acrylic? That's exactly it. Uh, acrylic, the mm, monomer in the acrylic specifically, uh, can be leached out, is found to be leaching out from the set prosthesis even after the insertion. So some people do develop allergies to that particular component of it and cannot use uh, acrylic as a denture base. So for these people, the only other alternative is either nylon or composite resin we decided to uh, choose composite resin as the alternative for our practice. So how do you use Eclipse? Uh, it is, it's actually quite easy to use. Uh, it requires quite a bit of a learning curve, but once you get through it, uh, it's quite an easy material to use. It does not require a boil out as a regular method uh, of denture fabrication requires. Uh, it's practically, you build the denture from, uh, from the beginning, from the base, to the setup of the teeth, to the contouring of your gums in, in composite resin, in the Eclipse. Right. Once it sets, you can use it uh, for a try-in, and you can use that same setup to cure later on and uh, use it as the full denture that you are going to be inserting. So once you get a good final impression, you start to you use this material in some way to create the, the base plate, and then you build up uh, around, uh, around the teeth after that. Is that correct? Yes, yes. So uh, instead of in acrylic, you need to use um, the wax rims and such. With composite resin, you are building up the base, the denture base directly in Eclipse. You can do your trine with that same denture base, so you have, uh, even in the initial appointment of white registration, you're able to, to check for fit of the dentures. Right. So that's, that's a small bonus with this method. So you must be fairly sure of your, of your setup when you come to a try-in, eh? Well, you can actually modify your, the position of the teeth during the, set, during the um, try-in process. The material that you're using to set up the teeth, the clips, it can be warmed up and and uh, changed. So the position of the teeth is not final in the beginning. You can still, at the trying stage, move them around as required. Well, I think you've got a video that you want to um, walk us through um, to show us you using um, Eclipse. Yes, let me show you that. So here I'd like to demonstrate the use of the material in full denture fabrication. Uh, here I am using the setup resin, as we talked before, uh, to first melt it, knead it into a soft format. This will allow me to set the teeth into it. And as you can see, it's quite hard. <laughs> it requires quite a bit of force in order to start it moving. And this is exactly the state of the material at the trying stage of the denture fabrication. 
So once you had it molded and set it aside for, uh, for a couple of hours, it will harden to that same initial state. Now here I am melting the surface layer of the material in order to put it against the already preset base plate. This will allow a better fusion of the two materials, even though they are of the same kind, they require a greater extent of um, proximity to each other in order to cure properly, in order for it not to um, disengage after the curing process. So as you see, it is quite a soft material after I kneaded it. The same state can be taken, uh, can be achieved by just heating it up a little bit uh, in the conditioning oven, uh, which is practically a toaster oven of uh, slightly more expense. Uh, here I am melting in the material into any spaces in between the teeth that I already set. Remember this, um, this setup that I'm making right now, after a try and it will be cured, which means the final product is exactly what I'm doing here right now. We won't be taking them away. We will not be adding anything to it unless, uh, unless required afterwards. But any spaces, if not filled right now, will end up in the final product. That's why I need to make sure that all the spaces are filled. The teeth are set up, uh, again, you melt the material underneath in order to set up the teeth. And the teeth have been pre-bonded in a special bonding agent that will allow a what is a sufficiently almost a chemical bond between the acrylic teeth and the composite resin of the, uh, of the denture-based material. So here again, I'm melting it in. This not only provides me with filling in any spaces, but also melts the top layer of material so I can add the second step of the process to this, um, to this setup. And the second part would be the setup, the contour resin. Setup resin was formulated to hold the teeth in place. Contour resin was formulated so it is more polishable. It's more aesthetic to the view. It has the fibers required uh, for, to make it look like live gums. And here I am applying the liquid portion, the liquefied uh, contour resin. When it is set, when you leave it on the bench for a little while, it cools down to a, almost a solid state. This will allow you to do a try-in without uh, worrying about moving teeth, without worrying about changing any part of your denture at this moment. So you can see it's quite liquid. You can flow it in any, uh, in any places. And if you have any residual uh, spots that you have missed in between teeth or elsewhere, you just do it this way. Once the material cools down, it is very easy to carve, so you are able to achieve the same anatomy that you do with regular wax and boil out techniques. But this time, you don't have to process the denture. All you do after trying is stick it in the oven and after uh, an hour in conditioning oven and 15 minutes in the curing unit, you have the full denture fully ready to be polished. And this is approximately how it looks. Well, thank you very much, Anastasia, for showing us that, um, that procedure. Um, I was noticing there that the machine you were using to heat up the, um, the base uh, material was called a Wax Pencil Pro. And I guess it's normally used for heating wax. Is there mm -hmm. some sort of a particular setting or consideration that I have to take into, in, in, into mind you know, if I'm using it with another material like Eclipse? Yes, and you are very correct to point that out. Uh, this material is quite sensitive to heat. If melted at a too high temperature, it will burn and will not set properly. So maintaining the temperature of just starting to melt is quite essential. Um, there is a setting on the wax pencil that you use, and that is um, right on the halfway point. So you've probably, with a bit of trial and error, you've learned. Um how to set the thing exactly properly, eh? <laughs> yes, actually, you have to burn a denture or two in order to get that. <laughs> well, is there any other bits of wisdom you've picked up through trial and error or using Eclipse? Uh... Oh, absolutely. Um, it is 
it is a finicky material. In between layers, you have to melt uh, the material, at least either the onset material to the set material, or in between the onset materials, you have to have a liquid layer. So there are these small, small things that you want it or not, you have to try out. Um, another thing would be uh, this, the curing temperatures. The, cure, the curing unit has uh, set settings for, uh, to use with Eclipse resin. Because there are three different resins, there are a couple of settings. So a specific setting for each resin would be necessary. Otherwise, you're risking, again, to overheat the specific resin. Right. And you, know, you talked about doing some sort of um, a liquid at the base of the teeth. You had to apply that yourself, did you? Yes, you practically melt uh, the material underneath it. Uh, in terms of bonding agent, if that is what you mean, yeah, it is a separate process. Once you trim the teeth to the correct height, uh, you immerse the teeth in the liquid, heat up the liquid to 40 degrees Celsius, and in four minutes, it forms a hybrid layer. Uh, the bonding agent leaches into the acrylic lattice, uh, forming a hybrid layer that allows the bonding between the acrylic tooth right. and uh, the composite resin you're applying. Fair enough. Well, very interesting technology. Is there anything else that I should know before I consider purchasing this from my practice? It is uh, quite an expensive equipment to buy. Uh, unfortunately, the curing unit, the conditioning oven, uh, the wax pencil and uh, uh, the wax pot that I used are quite a bit of uh, commitment in terms of purchasing. However, it's not readily available uh, in any other office. So you do cover quite a bit of ground in terms of providing to patients that are not otherwise uh, serviced. Right, right. You know. And um, if you had your choice all over again, would you, um, would you invest in Eclipse for your practice? I would. I do not like the smell of monomer. I do not like to work with acrylic resins uh, simply because it's uh, it's quite quite toxic, at least to me. Um, so absolutely, in terms of health perspective, from my part, I am quite sad for this material. Right. And I believe um, you have set up that we're going to be able to work with a colleague of yours at PA, and she's going to tell us about a particular use of Eclipse in a particular place. Yes, actually, you'll be quite excited to hear Ella, um, our newest addition to Prosthodontic Associates, will uh, talk a little bit about her trip to Uganda this year, where she used Eclipse resins in, um, in places where otherwise we wouldn't have been able to do uh, acrylic dentures at all. So it allows quite a bit of variety, and she will definitely show you exactly what she did. Well, we, lo we look forward to welcoming her at a, at a later stage. And um, I want to thank you very much for this, um, for this interview and demonstration. Thank you, Don. It was a pleasure.